Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Like newborn infants, you must long for the pure spiritual milk, that in him you may grow to salvation. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Receive the joy of your glory, giving thanks to God, who has called you into the heavenly kingdom. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. I welcome you to Mass on this, the second Sunday of Easter. Uh, today's Sunday has many names, you can take your pick. The second Sunday of Easter, Low Sunday, the Octave Day, uh, Thomas Sunday, Divine Mercy Sunday, and my personal favourite, of course, Quasimodo Sunday. Uh, Quasimodo from the Hunchback of Notre Dame, found in Notre Dame Cathedral on the second Sunday of Easter, as the story goes. Uh, it's a play on the Latin uh, introit for today's Mass, uh, Quasimodo Genti, uh, like newborn infants. This is the day when the newly baptised, well, who should have been newly baptised last week, would have taken off their albs and taken their place as members of our community. Uh, please keep them in our prayers as they wait now until uh, we can have public Masses again before their baptisms. Public Masses today uh, aren't possible, so private Masses today. This one for all people of the parish. Father Rajesh also celebrating Mass for the repose of the soul of Frank Ratcliffe and Stephen Crooks. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. 
Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole community remained faithful to the teaching of the Apostles, to the brotherhood, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. The many miracles and signs worked through the Apostles made a deep impression on everyone. The faithful all lived together and owned everything in common. They sold their goods and possessions and shared out the proceeds among themselves according to what each one needed. They went as a body to the temple every day, but met in their houses for the breaking of bread. They shared their food gladly and generously. They praised God and were looked up to by everyone. Day by day, the Lord added to their community those destined to be saved. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. Let the sons of Aaron say, his love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. I was thrust, thrust down and falling, but the Lord was my helper. The Lord is my strength and my song. He is my saviour. There are shouts of joy and victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his love has no end. A reading from the first letter of St Peter. Blessed be God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy has given us a new birth as his sons by raising Jesus Christ from the dead, so that we may have a sure hope and the promise of an inheritance that can never be spoilt or soiled and never fade away, because it is being kept for you in the heavens. Through your faith, God's power will guard you until the salvation which has been prepared is revealed at the end of time. This is a cause of great joy for you, even though you may for a short time have to bear being plagued by all sorts of trials, so that when Jesus Christ is revealed, your faith will have been tested and proved like gold. Only it is more precious than gold, which is corruptible, even though it bears testing by fire. And then you will have praise and glory and honour. You did not see him, yet you love him, and still without seeing him, you are already filled with a joy so glorious that it cannot be described, because you believe, and you are sure of the end to which your faith looks forward, that is, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. And Jesus said, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you. 
and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those who sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those who sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas, called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands, and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas, put your finger here, look, here are my hands, give me your hand, put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Apostolic teaching builds on evangelization, the proclamation of the gospel which won many converts. The t this teaching was an early catechesis given to new converts, which they needed to profess for salvation. These basic truths evolved to become the baptismal promises that are renewed on Easter Sunday. Apostolic teaching became more structured and systematic as time went on, providing us with an orthodox and authentic interpretation of the scriptures, which then grew into the creedal statements we still profess today. And today we have the great gift of the new catechism, which Pope St John Paul II codified and published in 1983, so no preacher can get away with making stuff up. However, we see year in and year out how difficult it is to catechise people who have not really been evangelised. And so the church must always be evangelical in the proper sense that we hand on the gospel so that people may know, love and follow Jesus. And in deepening that relationship with him, they should want to know more about their friend and brother and that he has suffered and died for us. In appearing to his disciples, our Lord creates an intimacy which dispels our fear, allowing us to place our faith in him as the resurrection and the life. Thomas moves his doubt to a sublime profession of faith in Jesus as his Lord and God. Thomas's absence from Christ's first appearance was no accident, but an opportunity for the Lord to manifest to the world his bodily resurrection. This had a profound effect on Thomas who arguably travels the furthest to spread the gospel. And indeed, evangelization and catechesis require a community who are devoted to apostolic teaching and the sacred liturgy of the church, 
where in the Eucharist we offer prayers of thanksgiving for the sacrifice that takes away the sins of the world. Since Pentecost especially, the Church has never failed to come together to celebrate the death and resurrection of Christ. Our participation in these sacred mysteries sustains the Christian spirit and is the source and summit of our apostolic endeavour and drives our charity to those in our community who are in need. In the Holy Mass, Christ's cross is represented before our eyes, no longer as an image of execution, but as the throne of love of Jesus Christ, who reigns supreme in our hearts, which we lift up to the Lord, for it is right and just. St Peter's letter is a hymn of praise and gratitude to God for the marvellous rebirth experienced in holy baptism, giving us all the hope of eternal life, the salvation of souls. This hope of obtaining the heavenly inheritance gives Christians joy, even amid the trials which test our faith. And in the Holy Mass especially, we are given a foretaste of the joy of heaven itself. The culmination of our worship is the breaking of the bread of life, receiving with a pure heart and clean conscience the body, blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ. Union with our Lord is not external to our daily life, but integral to all our actions, our behaviours, our thoughts, words and deeds, and especially in our relationships. The sacrament of penance allows us to put right the sins that prevent us from receiving the Lord in Holy Communion, without which great harm would be done to our immortal soul, because the sanctifying grace of baptism is lost when we commit serious sin, meaning we are no longer a fitting dwelling place for God. Unfortunately, there is times when we cannot access the Mass or the sacraments because of this pandemic, because of persecution, because of priestly absences or shortages. The suspension of these public liturgies remind us that Sunday begins our religious observances and does not end them. And we have been spending useful time over the last five weeks or so cultivating the home as the domestic church, just as we heard in the first reading, making every dwelling place a house of prayer. So instead of the Nicene Creed, especially during Lent and Easter time, the baptismal symbol of the Roman Church, the Apostles' Creed, may be used. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, God's power will guard us until the salvation which has been prepared is revealed at the end of time, and so we pray. For the Apostolic Church, may we go out to the whole world and proclaim the good news. Lord, in your mercy. For world leaders, in managing the lockdown and exit strategies, may they work for the common good of all people, especially the most vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For vocations to the priesthood, diaconate and the religious life, 
so that we may continue to be devoted to the Eucharistic prayers and the breaking of bread. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all healthcare providers, staff, care and key workers, that they may be protected and know our gratitude. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick and the housebound, may they be healed and strengthened in their isolation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed and those with anniversaries at this time, may they receive their eternal glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty Father, we remain faithful to the apostolic teaching that we have received, and so we ask you to hear and answer our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for ever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising, Restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn 
of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deo Sabaoth, plenis uncelli et terra, gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings of a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. 
In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation of the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, for whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On your stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On your stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On your stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Bring your hand and fill the place of the nails, and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, so uh, join us at three o'clock here on the Facebook live stream for the Divine Mercy devotions. Uh, we begin the three o'clock prayer at three o'clock, so we may just want to uh, log in just a couple of minutes in advance. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Regina Celi Letare Alleluia Quia Quia Murusti Portare Alleluia Resorexit Sicut Dixit Alleluia Ora Pro Nobis Deum Alleluia